All right, everybody, welcome back to the Move Podcast, brought to you in each and every day this uh, this summer by Ketone IQ, made by HVMN. We'll get into that in here in just a sec. Uh, talking about stage five. Alain, where'd we go? Stage five. Po, tu, la race. Po, <laughs> tu, la race. I mean, uh, <laughs> it's just, I laugh every day. I know. <laughs> you get the biggest <laughs> kick out of that. <laughs> Are we well, going to see Elon? I haven't uh, seen him we'll see him. He, he, usually, he usually comes by for he one comes live by, But He's yeah. living his best life. We, we, we don't know where this guy is. I mean, mm. actually, I think he was over in Corsica. But it just never gets old. <laughs> it's, fucking, uh, oh, it's so good. Um, uh, t- talking about stage five, an exceptional result by um, um, Jai Henley, which, was, which came up uh, several times in our pre-show with, with our good friend Spencer Martin. Uh, and, 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 uh, you know, I, I, I was, it was a tough day. I mean, I, you know, to be accused of besmirching somebody, this, this is my point. This was my point to Spencer. Right. And I want to just brag on myself a little bit, um, outside of the fact that it's July 5th. And for those who don't know, Spencer Martin does our outcome show, the, outcomes. Betting, the, the sports betting show, but then he sat in on our previous show. He sat here. in on it yeah. and did for, all the data and it. talked about stuff. Um, but I want to brag on a couple things. One, uh, you know, it's July 5th. All right. And if you remember a year ago, I had to wear glasses, sunglasses the whole time. I'm doing better this year, year later. And number two, the, the said rider, Jai, Jai Henley, uh, who's a real rider, by the way, who I, I got accused of besmirching, which I didn't even know what that word meant. Uh, I was like, oh, let's see what this kid's life is about. I'll go on Instagram just so you know, George. Now, oh, George no. has got, go. George has got, go. George, just everybody, George has some flex later in the show. But uh, I said, let's see what this guy's life's about, you know, and go on IG. What does it say? It says, I look at it. I was like, whoa, it says follow back. The kid, this, this was my point to Spencer. Like, God forbid the kid listen to the show mm-hmm. and think that I'm besmirching him. Uh, and he, and so I was like, shit, I'll follow back. Yeah. I'm going to follow you. Def- I, back. What I recall, you defended yourself well in that Thank moment. Thank you. So basically um, just I'm jumping you- on the bandwagon. Guy wins the stage six yellow jersey. No, I think I, 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 look I, and 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 as as was evidenced by the post race interviews, this this is a kid who's um, easy to cheer for. I thought he was amazing in the post race interviews. Very humble. Comes from Perth, which is a I've been to a bunch of places in Australia. Never been to Perth, but by all accounts, there's no mountains there. Uh, so for all you kids that grow up in flat places, uh, uh, don't lose hope because. Look, at this kid's in the yellow jersey. And, yeah, and he, a Giro winner. And, and a Giro winner, which when he went to the Giro, he was sort of a, a last-minute add-on to the Giro. Mm-hmm. And he's, you know, he's always been a good climber, good stage racer, and they kind of just protected him, not, you know, not expecting him to win the Giro. And he just got better and better and uh, ended up dropping Carapaz on the other, hardest stage of the Giro. Mm-hmm. Just an incredible victory. Um, so we're, we're seeing... We're not, yeah, I want to I, I wanna get guy. in a little more to his the the entirety of his career, but also his season. I was going back and looking just at how his season has unfolded. I think it's I think it's fascinating to see how guys use the early season races and, and how they lead up to the tour. But before we do, today's show brought to you by AG1. We literally drink it every day. Uh, I, frankly, I was sick and tired of taking a bunch of pills and supplements, and I just wanted one single solution to cover all the bases, whether it was for supplements or for you know, things like vegetables that you're supposed to eat, which I've never been uh, great about. I also wanted better gut health. This was actually the, the, the origin story around why AG1 was created. The founder was looking for something uh, to help with his gut health. Also a boost in energy, immune system support, and, uh, and, it, and it tastes great. Um, with every daily serving, I'm getting myself uh, set up for success with 75 high-quality ingredients that give me key daily nutrients and support energy, focus, strength, and clarity, uh, covering all my nutritional bases. Let's make this easy. Um, if a comprehensive solution is what you need from your supplement routine, then try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Head on over to drinkag1.com slash the move. Again, that's drinkag1.com slash the move. By the way, you saw me hit that uh, that vitamin D thing, to, the dropper from AG1. Yeah, yeah. Everybody's low in vitamin D. I'm low. I'm like, fuck, I'm outside all the time. Like, what's up with the... Your, your DNA doesn't absorb it. Is that right? I think oh, so. That's my, that's my case. I had some studies now done. we're talking, George talking DNA. Doctor, he's the doctor again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> doctor's oh, that's right. back. Doctor, Dr. Hink, Dr. Hinkapi is back. And, 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 and I actually have a question for Dr. Hinkapi when we talk about Quinn Simmons, but I'll get to that also in a sec. 
Uh, today's show also brought to you by Wahoo. All right. See what I did there? <laughs> the, I like the bike. I have a couple of, a couple of cool things about Wahoo. Not only was, was Jai Henley um, using the Wahoo Bolt bike computer today, um, it is the number one bike computer used in the Pro Peloton. The latest release, the Bolt 2 and the Rome 2, include Wahoo's new Summit feature. Which when you so basically you get to a climb and this thing pops up and, and it's helpful if you're riding in the tour or if you're just a bunch of slappers like us riding around, you see the climb coming up, you see how steep it is, you see how far it is to go, uh, pretty incredible. But here's an, uh, another fun thing that George has been kind of debating me on. These guys in Cav b- b- backed me up on this when we saw him in Mallorca. <clears throat> These guys are using the computers for the downhills, right? So you can you can pull out the 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 screen and, and you're getting the mapping in real time. And if you haven't been on these roads a lot, which, you know, they, the, maybe a handful of times somebody's done that downhill today, especially a rider like Jai Henley, you can start to see, you see if it's, you know, it's a slight bend right, slight bend left, or if it's a switchback, you see it coming. Now you're not staring at the computer and making the turn, but you just get a little heads up to what, how severe the turns are. Which I, I kind of have a hard time envisioning that just because these corners are coming up at you so quickly and what's most important when you come into these corners is the setup for a lot of these corners so if you're looking at which way the corner is going and then you're missing the setup then you're defeating the purpose here's the so thing. i don't understand it but uh, well here's what I, I, you and you also haven't tried it so um the list, next time we're let's out on a road ride we'll try it and i'll, I'll walk you through it doctor okay um 20 off all full price products during the tour head on over to wahoofitness.com slash the move and use the code over there, the move, all one word, and get you a bolt just like Jai Henley. Um, what, what a what a you know uh, what a relief to have a day like today uh, after yesterday, and, and um, boy, nothing disappointed. Thirty three riders almost from the gun, um, and and Jai Henley found his way into that group. Uh, we're gonna have a, a, a voice memo, a voice clip later on from his director talking a little bit about you know what they wanted to do for the stage, but. Man, well, let, before we go to that, what was the question on Quinn Simmons? I'm curious. So, Doctor Hincapi, my I, I, obviously Quinn Simmons hit uh, hit the ground pretty hard, tore up his jersey. Um, I I, th- I thought I had, and maybe I wasn't paying uh, close attention on that part of the telecast. Um, but I, I thought I had heard that he had to go back for the concussion protocol. Is yeah, that, yeah, that's correct. Okay, they gave him the thumbs up, and he made the stage, but he was pretty pretty beat up, man. You don't want to. Um, start the first mountain stage like that. But he's a young kid. The guy's a, uh, a gladiator. I think he'll be fine in a couple of days. Um, going back to the start, like you said, 33 guys. The first thing I thought when we turned on the TV was if 33 guys were away in the first mountain stage, Johan is yelling at us big time. Like, mm-hmm. guys, what the hell are you doing? There's no way you can let 33 guys go. No way. Especially the uh, a former Giro winner, um, strong guy. I, I just I was blown away to see so many guys away. Um, UAE had one guy there, Solaire. That's not that's not great. Jumbo had more guys up there, which made it a much better situation for them. But still, 33 guys is just almost unacceptable to and, let that many got, guys go. Uh, and got to almost four minutes. Was it four minutes? So yeah. That's I mean, it's, yeah. Johan Johan would have been screaming when it was 30 seconds. And it's just a lot of extra stress that the UAE team had to go through today. You saw the guys' faces on those earlier yeah, climbs. I mean, they were going as hard as they can possibly go. Perhaps Pogachar wasn't going as hard, but it's, it's mentally very stressful to be in that situation where you're responsible for controlling that lead. And perhaps we saw what happened to Pogachar at the end of that race because of the stress he had to go through before. They're going, shit, these guys have four minutes. Former Giro leader, my guys, or I screwed up. I mean, you just, you don't, you have a, a handful of guys at the start of these stages. Johan would say, look, there's probably going to be a breakaway. But I don't want to see these five guys in this breakaway. And you know what? Your 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 role, your your responsibility that day for guys like myself would be like, well, these five guys are going to go. Maybe ten other guys will go, but it's not one of these five guys. And hundred percent, Jai Henley was one of those five yes, ten guys that could not have gone in the front, and they let him go. So they always in the bus you identify. Oh, absolutely. Oh, the team meeting that's a threat. Yeah, I mean, you know, you know, if you're in the yellow jersey you're going to get attacked the shit out of you from the gun, especially on a day like today. So and that's going to happen guaranteed. So what do you do? You start, you try to focus on the, the main guys. You can't control everybody. It's impossible. You get the best guys in the world. So you focus on five, six, seven guys that are real GC threats and you don't let them go. Hmm. Did UAE wait too long to take up the chase or they just couldn't? I think the they were so aggressive at the start that it was just it was hard for them to mobilize and and uh, like we'll hear later on from our good buddy um, Gasparotto, 
uh, there was games being played from Jumbo and UA. Like, you know, why don't you guys start chasing? Well, they're like, we got three guys in the front. Why are we going to chase? You guys need to chase. So perhaps there was a bit of indecisiveness going on there. Um, but once you let a group of, you know, three guys with really strong rollers like Van Aert, um, uh, Mads Peterson, yeah. I mean, some guys that just are the best flat riders in the world. It's hard to keep these guys in the control. Yeah. 33 guys is always a lot of guys. Yeah. I mean, that's, we had a couple of, of times with those. Um, and, and, and fortunately they were days where, you know, the year with, um, with the, you know, that French guy, yeah, we let him go. And, but it was 28 guys. I think it was a lot of, I mean, 33, that, that's a yeah. lot of riders. That, that 33 is going to roll. I, I, mean, I do it, remember that, that year. And I was actually mad. I'm like, guys, how are we letting these guys go? And Johan's like, just relax. You know, we didn't have a former Giro winner in there. We had strong guys. I mean, Eric Decker with Simone, who ended up, Simone or Simone, who's a French guy, who ended up. <laughs> I was up, trying to not say his name because I was afraid I'd mess it up. Yeah, but, and, I'd like, probably like, like you it up. Just Johan did. will probably text us and give, me, give us shit or give me shit. But <laughs> he ended up leading the Tour de France for the next 10 days. I mean, he had, and he became a, a national hero. I wasn't comfortable with that situation. Johan was much more comfortable than I was. It was a rainy, nasty day, but I was like, we're giving these guys 30, they, we gave them like 30 minutes. It's funny, it that crazy. came up uh, on a question yesterday, yesterday on JB Squared. Someone asked, you know, Johan, have you ever feel like you made a big tactical error? And of course his answer is no, but he did say that one day, mm -hmm. he took a lot of criticism for letting that break. Uh, go so far. It was only one other time, uh, and it was a stage, and it was over. I think it, it was either on the German border, might even we were up in the Alsace and crossed over, and it was a little drizzly, and we had let a group go that had Vinokurov in it, so similar, not not dissimilar to today, and we could not bring them back, and they were riding away from us, and and you're sitting there going, okay, this is a problem, and lo and behold, Vino gets a slow slow leak and comes back, and they were like, oh, there is a god. Like yeah, it, 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 that, then we got to sit up, but 33 guys is, is, is too many to let uh, go up the road. By the way, today's uh, stage here, just looking at Wout Van Aert's uh, Strava, you know, I'm just nerd. I love nerding out on Strava, uh, 11, over 11,000 feet of climbing. It just keeps coming. And tomorrow, which we'll get into in a second is, is another big one. So what well, at the beginning of the show, you brought up how you like to look at you know, their race history and trending. Have you looked at Hindley's season? I did. He was I pretty did. quiet. He was, you know, if you go... Uh, there was I, fourth I, in Dauphiné. Yeah, it was like I the mean, best result. Boy, you, you know, and I always use pro cycling stats. Um, by the way, I saw their uh, camper van or something on the on the final climb today or one of the final climbs. I thought that was kind of cool. But if you uh, take away 2022 when he obviously won the Tour of Italy and he had a better, you know, a stronger overall season, well, you go down the 2023 he was quiet. I mean, there's some things in here. Uh, 12th at Amstel Gold Race, which, you know, so what? Uh, but but either just finding his form or knows exactly what the hell he's doing. I mean, he, he was he was laying low, but clearly not laying low enough to, to I mean, people were picking him uh, to do things like this. And he's built himself a lead. And well, I mean, he hasn't he hasn't. Proven like, and in fact, our guru said this to me before uh, and during our, our previous show was that he has not proven himself in July. He's never seen him really perform that that's well right. past uh, the spring. And uh, boy, but, has he proven himself uh, today? Exactly, and that's the benefit of having a quiet spring where you're just not you're just not going into those reserves and you wait. I mean, it, it takes a patient build up and a patient rider and a pa patient team around him. To do it, and time will tell. This is, yeah. I don't need to keep reading off every day how many feet of climbing they're doing. The, the time is going to tell for everybody in the third week of this tour because this is not normal. This is not normal. And, no. and as we'll probably find out here in a minute, it wasn't expected. It wasn't part of the plan. But what happened was a perfect storm. I mean, Bora got in there with two or three really strong guys and a bunch of other guys that have a lot of top 10 potential for the GC. So what's going to happen? They're all going to work their asses off because they all have the most to gain from getting ahead of the Pogachars, the, the, guy, the other uh, top 10 candidates. So they're going to work together really well, and it makes it really hard. As we saw, they got four-minute gap with uh, UAE chasing really hard. I think we should... What do you think? You think, you think the boomstick? The boomstick I goes think the, to I, I, the team or Jai? I, I'm going to give it to Jai Henley. Yeah, I wonder why, I, I, you know, Mr. I, Individual. <laughs> Instead of giving it to the team. Wait, Mr. Individual, you're the one who's just, you, <laughs> you just said for the record that you are against somebody becoming a national hero. 
That's what you just, yes, I you did. Say, I said you were he like, became, yeah, we made, you made, we made the fucking he, guy a national hero. I didn't That's, say I was against it. I was just proving, <laughs> no, I was making just, a statement. The way you said it. I was it, making it, a statement. I mean, the poor guy, he's probably still walking around getting free uh, uh, beers and coffees. Just go, and, and George is like, we, and I'm happy for him. George's like, we made the guy a fucking national hero. <laughs> I was just more upset that Anyways. I had to worry about a 30 minute gap. <laughs> hey, Perth, Australia. How about your boy, Jai Henley? That's amazing. Yeah, all the talk like, about uh, uh, Vingago and Pogachar and Jai Henley's like, take that. Yeah. So, right? I, yeah. So, I, I want to go back to that. The, in the beginning, how stressful it was, guys attacking everywhere, all the directors are yelling at their riders. The one thing I did hear, one of the directors, I forget, was that every team was represented in that breakaway. Every team. So, there's not one team in the back that's going to go all in to get, to get them, although UAE probably should have. If I know Johan, he would have been, he would not have let them get more than 30 seconds before he mm -hmm. would have made us chase that down and control it 100%. Um, so these guys are going away. There's high stress um, and it's 33 guys. It's just, it's really hard to control something like that. But they were not, even Bora, that was not part of the plan in the morning. And what happened was guys like Jai Henley were just super Mosca. They're just Mosca. following the move. Mosca's back. You know, they're staying up front. They got nothing to lose from just staying up front. You know what? Maybe I'll get lucky and get in a breakaway. It's not likely going to happen. Not even not even Bora would have imagined that scenario happening today, as I think we should pull up the I quote know, from. The, I, I want to say, I, I want to tease it out. Um, uh, after the commercial break, we're, we're going to have a, a, and this George is asserting himself as he does. In these big shows, and 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 goes to his uh, his Rolodex. Is that even still a thing anymore? It's a contacts on your <laughs> iPhone. <laughs> Whatever. He goes to his thing, and 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 sure enough, zing zing. He's got he's got some uh, scoop, and he's got a, a a voice message from the director of, of Bora, Enrique Gasparotto, Enrique, good friend of ours. Uh, yeah, uh, it, yeah. Yes, good friend of mine for sure. And then we're going to pull up uh, what he said about today's stage. Yeah, he'll, he'll give us the rundown of just how that went for them. But before we do. Today's show also brought to you by Ventum. The all-new GS1, which, as you know, is their gravel bike, is now available in the minted colorway. Built exclusively with SRAM, Apex, AXS, all for $2,000, not $3, which I screwed up the other day, all for $2,999. You're getting a killer bike for less than $3,000. By the way, uh, they, they never downspec their bikes. So the, that GS1 is the exact same GS1 that George rides, I ride. In fact, Colton rides it too back there. I just got mine. And and JB rides it. If, I mean, golly gee, if y'all are sitting at home going, I don't know, JB rides it. What size is that? What size is that, JB? I might need to borrow it today. It's the it's the medium large. Oh, okay. okay, probably not tall enough for you. But I think Good it's job. you're getting a basically a pro bike uh, with badass parts for less than three thousand bucks. It happens. Also, the new NS1 has a uh, a new integrated all road bar, better tire clearance, and refined carbon layup for improved stability more compliant descending, and stiffer cornering. Why choose Ventum? The brand's kicking ass. They have dedicated customer support. They're producing great content. You can see all that on their Instagram and YouTube channels, at Ventum Racing. Get 10% off when you use the code WEDO at checkout over at VentumRacing.com slash The Move. Also today brought to you by Roca, a brand that's just also kicking ass. Uh, JB from our home down of Austin, Texas. Uh, Rob and his whole crew, whether it's on the performance side, the casual side, or uh, on the uh, uh, prescription, what do you go? I always say readers. These are prescription and readers that I'm wearing. They're both. Oh. Whoa. It's called progressives. So you can do that. Is that, a, oh, <laughs> that's kind of cool. Anyhow, they've, they've invented a completely new class of, a class of eyewear uh, optimized for performance. Uh, by the way, is if you sweat like I do, they, they will not slip, which is great if you're out riding or running. Uh, or anything, or golfing, as I've been doing a lot lately. Uh, also, unbelievably lightweight. You'll never even realize they're on your face. They do have the best optics on the market. Uh, no other shades compare. They're crystal clear, fog resistant, and scratch resistant. The Move listeners get 20% off. Just go to Roka, that's R O K A dot com. Uh, use the code The Move, all one word there, and that gets you 20% off. Uh, last one of the day, uh, today's show also brought to you by, and is our, of course our presenting and title sponsor for uh, all three weeks, HVMN. Gee, you've been hitting the ketone IQ. I feel like you have. You've come, you're, you, you seem sharper. I, I have been hitting it. I mean, I know you came in a little on the, the, on your, on your back leg. I'm starting to get acclimated. Yep. Uh, acclimated. You're working Sleeping off that better. 50th birthday. You've been yep. hammering the ketone IQ. Yep. 
And uh, the other thing, which, uh, you know, is, I think had a big effect <laughs> and it's going to continue to grow on me is firstly, I need to make a public apology. <laughs> <laughs> Yesterday, I made a statement that I want to kind of sort of retract. Uh -oh. I said, you didn't have many friends. In Does this Peloton. have anything to do with ketone or, IQ or, or keep going? But this is good. Yeah, is well, good. we'll finish the ketone IQ um, because I, okay. of course, I'm a big you fan. You did say that about that. I did notice that um, I also said you didn't have many friends here. But you, since you've been on this new, like, <laughs> you know, health kick where you're waking up at 530, going to the gym at 630, bed at 830. Um, I realized you actually have a lot of friends. And what happens when you don't when you don't go out and socialize? Means I don't either, so I'm I'm not doing anything at night. I sit in my room watching Netflix. So I know, I know what I need happened. to make an apology, uh, and I actually would like to see you out a bit more with I, your friends. I know, and teams I know, what, I know exactly what happened. So you know, <laughs> the Fourth of July, I'm usually like the mayor of this town, right? And, and just soup sandwich, and and and, and 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 we do the thing for the parade. And I, you know, I just wasn't. Uh, we finished the show, and I'm around people here. I've got a house full of friends and family. Fr friends in fact you know and uh and i just i needed a moment by myself took my time so i know you went down to the parade yep. and what was happening everybody all and my friends all your friends said, room, where's land where's lands and yeah, the last it? thing land said to me as we're riding towards the party he goes i'm you know what? i'm gonna go home and he goes by the way i'm in no rush to get there <laughs> <laughs> showed up about two hours later and stayed for 10 minutes i didn't even see him so <laughs> there goes my day i went for a bike ride instead uh, i got that instagram picture though with my wife um and that was looking good. And and uh, and one of the comments which I showed you today, so I don't remember the guy's name who sent it, but yeah, I'm glad he's paying attention to the show. And HVMN, I swear to God, we're going to get back to <laughs> Ketone IQ in a second. Homeboy writes on the comment thing, says, looks like you lost those five pounds. Which, uh, you know what? Ooh. We got that picture, Bolchka or Kotlin. This Ooh. is, uh, I think, last year in Mallorca. <laughs> Do we have a comparison pick or not? Because no, no, let's not. No, no, we're not doing. You're okay, making not the guys it. work too hard. <laughs> and, Anyways, and for the record, we don't have anyone named Coltland on our team. <laughs> but I'll look for. Hey, one. we go. We we got this <laughs> thing together. I'll we look got for this one. Thing together. How did he say it? Coltland. Coltland from is. That's what I say. It, that's the kid that uh, grew up in Bahrain, right? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, ketone IQ, IQ. They invented the first drinkable ketone in 2017. And their latest innovation uh, has improved effectiveness, taste, and cost, delivers clean fuel that can cross the blood-brain barrier, supplying your brain and body sustained energy, mental focus, and sharpness, putting you in the flow all day long. You can save 30% off your first subscription. Order over at, uh, sorry, hvmn.com slash the move. Again, that's hv, these are letters, hvmn.com slash the move and subscribe. Gets you 30% off. Um, and you can have better clarity and, and, and maybe even get some friends. It's working for me. Uh, as we as we hyped before uh, that, uh, George reached out to Gasparotto, who's, of course, the director sportif of, of Bora. I want to play the clip uh, uh, that he sent to George about just their strategy today. But then when we come out of that, I, I want to talk about Bora. I, I have some thoughts here. Okay. So guys yeah obviously it was not planned to to have uh, to have Jai and Amo in the break obviously we wanted to have Connie and he was you know and uh, yeah obviously not uh, it was not that easy to strategic wise and try to understand and try to read the race in the best way possible but I have to say having a Ciccone that was also in GC and the Ciccone is going for also stages in that group uh, that helped us a lot and probably you know also the fact that the behind uh, UAE and uh, Jumbo they they play ag against each other a bit helped us a lot to to gain time or to stay with a good time gap and then uh, uh, yeah obviously on the final we used uh, we wanted to use a little bit emo eventually to to stay in the front to try to go for the stage and uh, to try to arrive to the finish line with much time gap possible and uh, um, actually what we can say now now we can only say that uh, you know to grab to grab opportunities we everybody must be in the right place in the right moment and this has happened today and so we took advantage to all the the <laughs> games they did behind and we took advantage uh, about the situation uh, and yeah, uh, at the end we are happy, and from now on cannot be a bad tool for us. Wow, uh, you should be happy. I mean, that's. Uh, but let me let me just talk about Bora. By the way, I don't even know what Bora is. 
kitchen equipment. Cool. Um, uh, th- this team's been around for a while, right? And, and, and if you all will remember, of course, Peter Sagan was the face before you finish uh, b- before you finish that. And this is for all the potential sponsors out there. Hold that thought. Bora is a kitchen appliance company, and the owner of Bora swears by the effect the team has had on his company. They started, they were a one floor building and now they're over 10 floors uh, oh, somewhere wow. in Germany. And he attributes it all to the fact that the company, the, the cycling team has had on his company. Okay. Finish so it, it, this is, this goes right to my point. I was going to make this said guy, this, the founder, CEO, whatever. Um, that's awesome. Um, uh, but, but this team had really hitched their wagon to the Peter Sagan train. And as we know, this is, it's been one of the, um, you know, it's been a great story. Um, um, and, and he won a lot of races for them, but, but I remember when he, uh, remember when he was wanting to, to, his contract was up and he was looking for other teams. There was quick step and the, most of the teams were, uh, affiliated with specialized, but you know, Sagan, uh, you could argue was not the same Sagan that had been three or four years before. Uh, wanted to go to a team, was going to bring what, have three or four teammates, 11 staff. Remember, we talked yep, a lot about yep. this. And Bora just said, you know what? I don't think so. And they let him go. And, and it just goes to show you, I mean, uh, look at this team now, right? Uh, credit to, to, to obviously the founder and the guys running the team like Gasparotto. They said, look, we're going to lose arguably the biggest star in the sport. We, we can't match either the financial demands or the personnel demands. And we're going to rebuild the team. Well, fuck. Who's in the yellow jersey, yep. right? And and if you look at the eight riders they have, uh, it, it's a there's not a bunch of panic cooking on this team. This is a real team, and so I think that's amazing. I mean, to to and and and, and I would never slight anybody, uh, including Peter Sagan, for going and taking the money of Direct Energy. But the record will show, right? That was the right move to let mm-hmm. him go, take a minute, rebuild the team, and I don't know. Uh, we can go down uh, uh, Sagan's resume uh, since he left. It was a smart move. Yeah, and um, they look like you just pulled up that um, roster. I mean, they have an incredible roster team. But Bob Youngles, who's a good friend of yep. mine, came to the Fundo last year, won a stage of the tour. I mean, th- these guys are excited. Tomorrow they're going to be controlling the race of the Tour de France. And they have all have tons of experience. Um, so this is a really good team to be in that position right now. I agree. Bookman, Paulet. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Bob Jungles. Yep. I heard he's a, a hell of a dancer. Is that he, he really Liz, is. I Liz, could probably Lizzie pull up told some, me that he's got some moves. I could probably pull up some of his dance moves at my house. The dude, the dude's got rhythm. Let's just say. <laughs> Does that mean he like it was fearless, or he can actually dance? Because there's the t- you can like I can dance. I mean I'm fearless. No, 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 so no, no, like no, I can. You do- cannot dance. <laughs> Don't even go there. Um, Have but you, I've ever, I've, I think I've showed you guys the uh, the sprinkler before. Right? I, I've seen the sprinkler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, all right, well, you can do the sprinkler. Yeah. <laughs> is that the kind of shit he does or no, he does no, 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 no. he does some real shit he does real stuff yeah like moonwalks or i don't even know how it's called but uh and he's a great guy all right he here's a, here's a real big question for you guys uh going into this tour it was always the top two and we talked about the third place on the podium jai hanley was in that conversation do we change that conversation now could he be First or second? Well, it's it's it, that's this just much, temporary. Too, too much. No, I don't want to say that. It's just, but that's a lot of pressure. Um, he he's affirmed or confirmed, I should say, what 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 the odds maker said before the race. But we have a long ways to go. This and we'll we'll, we'll get a, a really good indication tomorrow. Um, yeah, and I think I think uh, Jumbo is happy with the day. I mean, they got they put time on Pogacar. I think they only lost uh, forty five seconds to Jai Hindley. They're in a great. They have an amazing team to control perhaps for the next week at least. Uh, um, so they could just pretty much sit back and keep Jonas where he is right now. Uh, yeah, and when Jumbo went to the front, right. both of you were like, what are they doing? What are yeah. they? Everybody the commentary was the like, what is going on here? Yeah. And so clearly... So they, they smelled blood. Because, Jonas felt good. Yeah, they smelled blood on Pogachar because um, we were all kind of in awe. Of why would they be doing the job for UAE right now? But they were trying to make Pogachar suffer, and they, they sure did. It just goes to show, I mean, you, you, and, and uh, we, we certainly questioned it sitting in the living room, and the, and the commentators on TV uh, questioned it. 
But guys and gals that are sitting around watching the Tour de France, us included, you don't know anything, right? If you're in the race and you get to know it, you, these guys know each other so well. I mean, we did it and guys did it to us. They, it could be anything. Or you hear a guy coughing more than he's ever coughed in his career. Or you just see a little sweat or they're standing up more than they would normally. You're like, huh, are they not having a good day? They see, they see a thousand times better than we do. Mm-hmm. And so for us to sit at home and be like, what are they doing? This is ridiculous. Clearly they saw something and it worked. Yep. Yeah, Johan's good at picking up those cues uh, just from television too. How cl- he must sit really close to the screen. I mean, how's that, go- how's that work? Like, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, and, it, and it worked. And by the way, it worked to the tune of, I mean, now Vinga go, uh, Vinga guard, Vinga, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, has almost a minute on Pogachar, and 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 um, by the way, uh, we have to mention Sepp Kuss. I mean, yeah. this, this kid, not surprising. He's always there. Um, he, he's 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 an A plus, and he didn't just peel off. He just well, stuck the, on uh, on Pogachar's wheel, right? That's, Which is totally that, demoralizing. that's a head game, right? Yeah. It's totally demoralizing. Yeah. Um, and we'll see with Pogachar. Right? This is a, we know his style. We know. He's very tough, and he and he's very aggressive. He he, and you saw at the finish today, that was a different face and a different demeanor and a different look. His, his that sort of friendly high five, everybody. We didn't see any of that today. So either he he just had a bad day and he's pissed, or he's he's in crisis. But well, he got he got he, the he got the L.A. rope dope. I mean, who was the guy, the aggressor? Who was the strongest guy in the first two stages, making the moves, trying to get away, doing right? the elbow fl- elbow flicks. Um, today he got the rope dope and uh, Jonas you did said one it, effort and put a minute on him. You said it in the preview show. Is this are, are we? Is this the point where he can race a little more conservatively? Maybe even call it smarter. Um, but uh, it's good for us, right? The guy's down. The guy's aggressive. It's good for all of us that watch the race. I mean, he has to. He has to animate the race now. Yep. Well, George made some money today. We should acknowledge that because he could probably treat us all to lunch or something. Uh, <laughs> I did. I but mean, the live uh, betting you know, is wild, isn't it? The live betting is wild. I'm, I'm not going to use the method to my madness of what made me win that money, <laughs> that paper. But, uh, you know, I, I felt like it was a, a good bet. And I actually think I got Lance a bet. Um, I told I, I, head of HR to bet, but she blew me off. Uh, but we made some paper. I jumped on. Yep. I jumped on the train. Made, I made. I don't even know what I'm I'm going to be all right. Kids, if you're listening, I think you're going to be okay. <laughs> all right. All right. What should we expect tomorrow? Well, Primarily. let's pull it up. It's a big day. Uh, of course, we need a land to pronounce these things, but <laughs> uh, a cold ass pen. Um, you know, the other thing that stood out today is they had some weather. I haven't looked at what the what These stages, especially in the Pyrenees, if, it, it can get nasty, right? In these days, that are, this is a short stage, but... I remember, and I, and I was reminded that because I remember going down the cold ass band one time and just these, these assholes were going so fast downhill in the rain. I was so mad. And I was so scared. And I was yelling on the radio. I was like, slow the fuck down right now. I was like getting gapped off. I felt like such a loser. Um, but it can be bad. But it's but- fun. That's why guys like myself leading the Peloton when you're going up the hills, you know, everybody's just sitting on the wheel, just chilling, making you suffer. But on the downhills, when you're in the front, you can make everybody else suffer. So that's kind of like your payback. And Lance would always yell at us, slow down, slow down. And be like, come on, just let us go a little bit harder because we want to make everybody else suffer. This is You're showing a new side of yourself. You hate national heroes. You love oh, making God. people suffer on the downhills, which means risking their lives, by the way. Uh, but you know, sorry, Colton, go back to that. Or how do you say it? Colton, can you say it? Or? We're going to call him Cotty. <laughs> a cold ass band, the Tourmalay, which is, is, is what it is. I mean, it's, it is, but that's a top five monument when it comes to the country of France for, uh, iconic climbs, 17 kilometers is 7.3%. It just goes forever. Uh, and then down. And then the final climb is not one that I know, uh, at all, uh, frankly, but, but at uh, least they get uh, to finish uh, at uh, the top. Which little, you like. They do. And, and a little deceiving 16 K at 5.4%, but we'll break down the last climb. Uh, that that five point four percent is deceiving because that's over the course of the sixteen k. But let's look at the. There's some steep pitches in there. Ooh, okay. So it starts pretty gradual, but then you've got four or five k in the middle that are uh, nine ten percent. That's that's plenty hard. And then obviously finish on top. You know what's interesting is I'm sorry. That's the tourmalet. Let's go to the. I was like the, uh, yes. Okay. Still three kilometers. Uh, very steep. Ten point five ten, and looks like eleven percent. So. 
uh, yeah, we'll we'll see how Pogachar. I think tomorrow we'll have a good indication of if today was a bad day. If if the wrist injury, let's not forget he had a big crash and was off the bike for weeks leading up to this tour. Yeah, I, I think know. yeah tomorrow, like you said, it's going to be it's going to be really interesting to see how the tactics play out. Obviously, there's going to be aggressive, a very aggressive start again. I wouldn't be surprised to see Wout Van Aert in the breakaway. Um, trying to put pressure on on Bora and see what UAE does is they start trying to get more guys in the breakaway to perhaps help Pogachar on a Tourmalet attack um, where he can catch up to some of his teammates. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw something like that happen. Well, if you're if you're UAE, you, 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 you need to not get anywhere near the front. They have a complete hall pass to do nothing, I think, at this point. I mean, if, if you're Bora, I'd be over there chatting with Jumbo. They still, I mean, Vingegaard looked amazing today. I think they have to help, but UAE is like, all right, well, that didn't work. We're out. There's, I don't, there's not going to be any help. I don't think between Bora, Jumbo, that's and, a bummer. And if UAE, we, I, I, don't I, I don't see any I'd, collaboration I'd happen. Be, I don't know. Oh, I'd be trying to get some help. Short stage. I'm yeah. Don't be, you think that Jonas wants to hit him again? Like that's. I think I think Jonas. Just, I, I if I'm him, I think you know what. I lost some time to Jai Henley. We'll see how that plays out. But I got time on 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 Pogacar and. I I'd, I would let tomorrow. I I would if I were him. I would just sip, obviously pull the no, target. He's wouldn't. gonna go. You wouldn't. If you, if you were him, you'd get to the last climb, which I think we'll see. And if Jonas is with Pogachar and Jai Hindley, or they're all sort of Jonas is gonna try again because no. he's 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 going really well. Why not try to go when he knows that he's going well? When he knows he's got Pogachar under pressure, he knows he took about a minute out of Jai Hindley on that climb and the downhill section. So he's he's clearly on paper stronger right now. You got to get him while they're hot. I, I would not be surprised if he attacks on that final climb, if they're all together. Well, as we said a minute ago, they know, they know how they know their peers and their rivals way better than we do. They're seeing things that, that, that we don't see if, yes, if he sees a moment, yes, he will go and he should go. But if all things are equal, I think he sits there and obviously Pogachar tries to claw back time. He's going to go with him. But if he doesn't see any weakness, he needs to. We tomorrow is the sixth stage. We're not even one week in. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but even so, if he attacks tomorrow, get, gets the yellow jersey, which he's probably not going to put. What is it? Forty-five seconds on John Hindley, but he might put some more time on Pogachar, some more time on John. Hindley. If he gets the yellow jersey, then he knows he's got the upper hand on those two other guys, and they can let the, they can give the jersey away to somebody else that they're not scared of in these next transition stages. That's something that we would definitely do. But as long as he's got that upper hand on the, his two biggest rivals, I would I would see him taking advantage of that. See, this is this is gonna be fun to watch. Yep. God, yeah. Good news for the move. I took a, I, you know, I didn't want to jinx us or anything, but I took a look at the podcast charts yesterday. You did, I've been afraid. I don't, I don't, I'm always like, ah, oh, I don't wanna look yet. I don't wanna, yeah. <laughs> Number four. Look Vamos. Vamos. And up two. Up two. Okay, so Bill Simmons, uh, so top three has stayed the same. Bill Simmons, uh, number one, pardon my take, number two, the Dan LeBetard show, uh, number three, those are all level. And we moved up too, we're number four. That's, I mean, I don't know what these other people are talking about, but, uh, it, you know, it's probably not bike racing. <laughs> we're, we're, in a good, we're, we're in a good position. We'll probably, we'll probably they wait might, they a couple might of days talk, to make the, the next attack, yeah, we're, so we're, to speak. Yeah, we're like, uh, yeah, we're playing this out just right. The mountains do help, I think. At the, and that, of course, that ranking came out yesterday, so we hadn't even had a day like today. God, we got that the, ranking came we, out yesterday after yeah. that boring ass stage. We right? got the mountains today, and we got you doing the sprinkler. I mean, I think we're going to just. Uh, <coughs> yeah. There's no limit to where we're going. <laughs> and now. you and you shitting all over national heroes. <laughs> 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 the man is is you. Is, 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 all right, a couple of questions and comments, and this one actually has a, an image to go with it. It says, "Hi, team, longtime listener and longer time fan." Yes, this is a little self-promoting to nominate myself for the Hall of Fame of people who have been almost on TV. Shred town. Look at that. But when I was a kid, this picture was taken of me and Lance at the tour of Georgia. Yeah, outside of Rome. That and, was outside of Rome, Georgia. And had a full page spread in Sports Illustrated. Super fortunate to meet L.A. back in the day. That's from Sam. That's cool. Isn't that That's a great cool. photo? That yep. is cool. And that kid's all grown up now. Yep. Well, that was a long, that was uh, 2004. So yes, that was a long time ago. 20, almost 20 years ago. Very cool. What was that on your, on your uh, bib? What was Alcola again? I just saw that. Do you remember? I, I don't remember what that Yo was. Yoand, he's going to have to chime in here. I know. I saw it on the legs. Yeah, I was like, yeah. what, I didn't remember having that sponsor. 
Here's another one. Hello, love the show and enjoy seeing Lance and George together. When I was a kid, I remember going to my grandma's house in the summer and watching the Postal Service team on a 13-inch TV. Hmm. Uh, here's my question for Lance. Which, which is harder, a tour stage climbing up the Pyrenees or being on Mars riding a stationary bike with Marshawn Lynch listening to him <laughs> talk smack? That's from Jeff. Well, there are different types of pain. But uh, the, Marshawn was we, – we were we – were, Fast friends. And so uh, all of my time with, with Marshawn on the show was incredible. Uh, but I, I'd rather I'd rather ride a bike to Mars than go get stuck in a, a Mars habitat ever again. That's just not – and not to not – to, I mean, it was a fascinating experiment. It's just hard for me to be um, put inside, left inside. And uh, you all know me. I mean, I'm, I'm an outdoor kitty. So uh, <laughs> there was there was some indoor kitties in there that, that seemed to be fine, but – not me. So you got out of Mars, and now you're just Mr. Antisocial. No, 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 no more fun. But Alec, <laughs> Alec is a product of Berry Floor. That was uh, Johan just chimed in. So Berry oh. Floor was a um, laminate floor company. Mm. So it was just one of their products. And the other thing, can we get Marshawn on to chime in one day on one of the rest of the shows? That'd be kind of fun. I mean, we better pull out the swear jar. All right, I pull mean, it every, out. every <laughs> second word. I, I was like, <clears throat> we were filming the show. And, 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 you know, there's 60 cameras in there and everybody mic'd up the whole time. And so they capture everything, obviously. And I'm like, they can't use anything <laughs> that any scene you're in is unusable, but I, clearly they've used it. But yeah, I mean, he, by the way, the guy likes to ride. He does these big, uh, and we can pull them up for a future show. He does these, uh, these group rides in Oakland that ride these cruiser bikes and he gets thousands of people that come wow. out. Yeah. He's, awesome. he's, oh, he's like a big social ride. Yeah. He loves, he can do wheelies. Hmm. Which I think is really cool. Can you do a wheelie? No, I can't. That's why I think it's cool. <laughs> Can you do a wheelie, George? Uh, no. I've never been. Okay. Uh, we're going to get to the NS1 Ventum trivia next, but here's another question real quick. Um, they came up with their own trivia question for us. Has a rider ever crashed out in the tour in the neutral uh, zone start oh. of the stage? <clears throat> That's from Patrick in Lafayette, California. I feel like we had one of those. Yeah, I think so. I mean... Uh, there, I mean, we've certainly lost. Johan, we lost, Yo, Johan would remember that. We, we, we've lost Avidelli on the, after the stage when he's coming down the hill to go to ride to the hotel. <coughs> uh, a fan ran into him, and he was, I think he just landed on his head, no helmet on. And I'm, was, I'm sure it's happened in the neutral zone as well, but I don't know uh, specific and, incidents. And, and so that unfortunate accident with Salvadelli, who was a great guy, who, by the way, was the best descender in the group, just did yep. some... You know that unfortunately, shit like that happened, and, and, we, and, the, and the world was gifted... The pink whistle by Contador <laughs> riding that reep, reep, with the pink whistle. Yeah, people forget. If you've well, been I mean, you always, to had a, you, uh, you, you always had a helicopter ride off the mountain. We actually had to get <laughs> ride down the mountain. So you don't, I never experienced that. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. It's come up on previous shows, but if you're new to the show, a lot of people don't realize that these mountaintop finishes, they turn around and ride back through the crowd. Yeah, you yeah. See, you'll see it tomorrow. And the crowd's all trying to leave the mountain as well. Yeah, it's, that's a, it's wild. a nightmare. That's wild. Uh, let's do the trivia now. Ventum trivia of the day. You could be uh, entered to win an NS1, the yep. road bike, all right, just by answering this via email. But first, we'll answer the question from yesterday. Where was George born? I'll let you answer that, George. Oh, Queens, New York. Queens, New York. I thought you were from Columbia. <laughs> I thought you were, like, born in Columbia. No, I was born in Queens. Jesus, I've known you for... Uh, 35 years and I just now figured that out. That's so <laughs> weird. Thought, but today, today's your brother, trivia. hang on. Your brother was born in Columbia. Uh, no, my sister was. Okay. I knew I was born in New York also. Here's today's question. And again, I'll give you the email address to send it in, get you registered to win that NS1. What was Vince Vaughn drinking during Lance Armstrong's cameo in the movie Dodgeball? Boy, I don't know. Great cameo. That, 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 we may have to play that cameo. It was, I mean, it, honestly, uh, in terms of as cameos go, it, it has to be, it's maybe, I think it's actually the best one of all time. You know, I mean, when you think about it, right, it was a great movie. Talks about doing Dodgeball 2, which uh, would be awesome. Um, <clears throat> can't say I've got the call about that yet, but, uh, <laughs> but, but it, it, honestly, it was, it was a really, uh, it was incredible. And, right. and hang on. Mm -hmm. And uh, here's why. Well, here's what made it incredible. Now, not only did I do a great job, but uh, <laughs> if the cameo doesn't, and this is what I get asked about this all the time, and I tell people, I said, "Listen, you realize if I don't show up in the movie, the movie ends. 
You know that, right? Right. If I don't stop Vince Vaughn at the airport uh, uh, and convince him, him you know, to, tell yeah. him, you know, I almost died and da 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 da. Yeah, the movie's over. You realize that, right? So it's it's. I don't know. I mean, it's, it's certainly in the Hall of Fame of cameos, for sure. It's You can find it on YouTube pretty easily if you want to get the answer of what Vince Vaughn was drinking. And, and you'll see what... How old were you when you did that? Because you, you said in the dialogue, five tours, so you would have been... You had just won in the fifth. Yeah, so what was that? Uh, oh, whatever, 2004, so I was... yeah. Just to see I was how old. You, I was 33 years old, but I... I um, your voice is like really high-pitched on that clip. You sound completely different. Stop it. I, I, I know one thing. My hair looks low. Look at my hair right now. Jesus, what what happened? <laughs> well, go go search for the answer to that question. Email it that to trivia. That is a good one. I have no idea. Trivia at VentumRacing.com, and that'll get you entered for the NS1. Cool. All right. Back in the Pyrenees again today, day two, and, and um, this is going to be another good one. So uh, for, for those at home, tune in, watch the race, and then join us later for the move. Have a good day. Almost. Almost.